In this video, we're going to look at the process of long division. But before writing out the problems in detail, we're going to think about what division means using some play money. The first problem that we're going to consider is 7,956 divided by 6. We can also read this problem as 6 divided into 7,956. The 7,956 we're going to think of as a certain amount of money, $7,956. And the division by 6 we'll think of as separating this amount of money into 6 equal parts. The six equal parts are represented by the six trays at the top. Now let's go ahead and count out our money. We need $7,000. Here's seven thousands, nine hundred. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars here. Fifty. There's five tens representing the fifty dollars, and six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've counted out a total of $7,956. I'd like to now separate this amount of money into six, six equal parts. I'll start with the seven thousands. I can place a thousand in one tray, a thousand in a second, another thousand, a thousand here and here, and finally, a $6,000 bill in the sixth tray. That leaves me with $1,000 left. Now, I can't cut this $1,000 bill up into pieces, but what I can do is I can exchange this $1,000 bill for a stack of 10 100s. 10 100s is equal to $1,000. I've already banded together 10 100s here, so I'll take off the band. Make sure that I actually have 10 of them. And I do. And I'll add them to the 9 100s I already have. I now have 10 plus 9 or 19 hundred dollar bills. I'm going to distribute these $100 bills now to the six trays. I'll start out one at a time. So there's one $100 bill for each tray. That would be a total of $600 so far. I can do it again. There are now two $100 bills in each tray, or $1,200. I think I can do it again. There are now three $100 bills in each tray, or $1,800. That leaves me with one $100 bill left that I can't split up into parts as is but I can exchange this $100 bill for a stack of 10 tens, and I'm going to do that. Here I have 10 tens banded together. That's equal to the $100 bill that I have left. And I'll place these 10 tens on my stack of 5 tens that I already have. 10 plus 5 gives me a total of 15 $10 bills. Let's distribute these to the six trays. So there's one $10 bill for each tray. A 
second $10 bill for each tray. And now I have three left, but that's not enough tens for me to place a 10 in each one of the six trays. So I'm going to exchange each one of these $10 bills for a stack of 10 ones. So here's a stack of 10 ones for one of the tens. Here's a stack of 10 ones for a second. And for the third, I have another stack of 10 ones. So banded together, I have 10, 20, 30 ones. Let's remove the bands. and I place them on the six ones that were already there. So I have a total of 30 plus six, or 36 ones, quite a few. Let's start distributing them to each of the trays. It's two for each. three ones for each, four ones for each, five ones for each, six ones for each, and actually that comes out even. I used up all my ones. I was able to distribute them evenly to each of the six trays. Now can you see we've separated our original amount of $7,956 into six equal parts. Each tray has exactly the same amount of money. Let's go ahead and count the money that I have in just one of these trays. This is actually the answer to our division problem. I have 1,000, 300, 20, 6 dollars. Let's go ahead and write our answer up above the division box. 1,000, I write above the thousands place. 300, above the hundreds place. 20, and six ones, I write above the ones place. 1,326 is the answer to this division problem. Now, what I'd like to do is go up to the whiteboard and we're going to redo this same problem using the long division process. We won't use money to help us. We'll just work it out with pencil and paper. Now let's go ahead and divide 7,956 by 6 using the long division process. Long division involves a series of four steps that we repeat over and over again. I call those four steps divide into, multiply, subtract, and bring down. And before we start this problem, I want you to know that I've drawn some lines on the whiteboard here to help me keep my columns lined up as I go through the long division process. You might want to draw some lines also on your paper to help you keep your columns lined up when you do problems on your own. You can also take a sheet of binder paper and turn it sideways so that the lines go up and down and write out your long division problems on that sideways sheet of binder paper. That can help you get the right answers for your problems. Now let's go ahead and start the process here. I start out by looking at the number in front, the 6, and I ask myself, how many times does 6 go into the very first digit I see inside the 7? 
That's the divide into step. Six goes into seven one time. I write that one directly above the seven. It's in the thousands place. That one represents the thousand dollar bill that we were able to put in each one of the six trays when we did this problem with money. Next I multiply. One times six is six. The six that I write here represents the six different thousand dollar bills that went into the six trays. Next we subtract. Seven minus six is one. The one that I get here represents the thousand dollar bill that was left over after we distributed the six. Remember how we exchanged that thousand dollar bill for ten one hundreds. Now after I subtract, I move to step four and I bring down the next digit, this nine. Nine is in the hundreds place. I now think of this one in nine is nineteen. It's actually nineteen hundred. Remember after we exchanged the thousand for ten one hundreds, we ended up with a total of nineteen hundred dollar bills. That's what this nineteen represents. Now, we just completed the fourth step of the process. After that, we go back up to the first and start this four-step process over again. So for the divide into step, I ask myself, how many times does six go into 19? Six goes into 19, well, let's think about that. One times six is six, two times six is 12, Three times six is eighteen. Eighteen is just one less than nineteen, so I know six will go in three times. I write the three directly above the nine that I brought down. That's the divide into step. Next I multiply. Three times six is eighteen. That was my multiply step. Next I subtract. Nineteen minus 18 is just 1, my subtract step. After I subtract, I bring down the next digit, that's a 5. After I bring down a 5, the process starts over. Each time I bring down a digit in long division, I have to write a number up above. 6 goes into 15 just two times. So I write the 2 up above, then I multiply. 2 times 6 is 12. Next I subtract. 15 minus 12 is 3. After I subtract, I bring down the next digit, bring down the 6. Back up to the first step. How many times does 6 go into 36? 6 goes in six times. I write the six above, directly above the six that I just brought down. Six times six is 36. Then I subtract. 36 minus 36 is zero. Now at this point, I have no more digits to bring down. So we're done. We have our answer. Our answer is 1,326. Now before we move on to our next problem, I just want to say one more thing about the problem we just completed. Remember, we just took 7,956, we divided by 6, and we got the answer 1,326. You can always check your long division by multiplying. Let's go through and check our answer here. I take the answer to the long division, 1,326, and I multiply by the number in front, by the 6. I should end up with the number inside, 7,956. Let's go ahead and see if that's what we get. 6 times 6 is 36. I write the 6, carry the 3. 
6 times 2 is 12, plus 3 is 15. I write the 5, carry the 1. 6 times 3 is 18, add 1, that's 19. I write the 9, carry the 1. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So I get 7,956. That's exactly the same as the number inside the long division box. So our answer checks out. Let's consider our second problem. 1,523 divided by 3. We can also read this problem as 3 divided into 1,523. We're going to think of the 1,523 as a certain amount of money, $1,523. And we're going to try to separate that amount of money into three equal parts. The three parts are represented by these three trays at the top. Now we might not be able to separate all this money into three equal parts just using dollars. We might have some money left over at the end. Let's go ahead and start the process and see what happens. I have one thousand, here's a thousand dollar bill, five hundred, I have one, two, three, four, five one hundreds, twenty here, two tens, next, and three on the end, that's three ones, one, two, three dollars. Now I'd like to take this total amount of money and separate it, spread it out evenly through the three trays. My $1,000 bill, I can't split up three ways. I can't take a part as is, but I can exchange it. I'm going to start by exchanging this $1,000 bill for a stack of 10 100s. The 10 100s are banded together here. I'll add these to the five 100s I already have, so I now have a total here of 15 100s. Let's start separating them into three parts. There's three 100s, three more, three more, three more, and three more. Notice that I'm able to separate all my 100s into three parts. Next, I move on to the tens. I just have two tens. Well, I need, would need three to separate them into three parts. So I'm going to exchange my $10 bills for stacks of ones. Each 10 can be exchanged for a stack of 10 ones. Here's 10 ones for one of the tens. Here's another stack of 10 ones for the other 10. I'll remove the bands. Here's 10, 20, plus the three ones that I started out with gives me 23 $1 bills. Let's go ahead and distribute them to each of the trays. There's one one, second, A third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and a seventh one dollar bill, but now I realize I only have two dollars left over. I don't have three, I don't have enough to put one dollar in each tray. I can't break these $1 bills down smaller. We're not going to use change here. We're just working with whole numbers. So these two $1, that $2 that I have left over, we're going to call our remainder. We were able to separate most of our original amount into three parts. Let's count the amount in one of these trays. 
Each tray has the same amount. We have two, three, four, five hundred, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dollars. In each tray, there was five hundred seven dollars. That's part of the answer to this division problem. Sometimes it's called the quotient. We also had two dollars left over at the end. That's our remainder. So on the end, I'm going to write R for remainder two, two dollars. Our answer is 507 remainder two. Now that we worked this problem out with money, let's go up to the whiteboard and work it out without using money, just with pen and paper. Now let's go ahead and work through our second problem using the long division process. We start out by looking at the number in front and we ask ourselves how many times does it go into the first digit? Well, three doesn't go into one, not even one time. When the number in front doesn't go into the first digit, we just move over and look at the first two digits together. We're going to think of this one and five together as a 15. Remember how I exchanged the thousand for ten one hundreds and we had a stack of fifteen hundreds that we worked with with the money? So here I think about how many times three goes into fifteen. Three goes into fifteen five times. The five I write directly above this five. I write it above the right end of the numbers that I'm working with right now. That's my goes into step. Next I multiply. Five times three is fifteen. And next I subtract. Fifteen minus fifteen is zero. This zero, by the way, is just like how we, it represents how we ran out of hundreds when we were distributing them to the three trays. Well, after I subtract, my next step is to bring down. I bring down the next digit, which is a two. After I bring down, I go up to the divide into step. Every time I bring down a di digit, I have to write a number up above. Well, I only have two now. Three doesn't go into two even one time. In fact, three goes into two zero times, so I need to write a zero above that two. I multiply next. Zero times three is zero, and then I subtract. Two take away zero is two. After I subtract, I get to my bring down step. I bring down the next digit. Just one digit at a time. Each time you bring down a di digit, you have to write a number up above. So now I'm back to divide into. Three goes into 23 seven times. Seven times three is 21. So I write a seven up above. Seven times three is 21. And then I subtract. 23 minus 21 is 2. Now, I can't continue with the bring down step because I don't have any more digits to bring down. I'm left with this 2. This 2 is the same as the $2 we had left over after we distributed the money into the three trays. This 2 is our remainder. So on the end of my answer, I write R2. 507 remainder 2 is our answer. Finally, let's go ahead and check our answer to this long division problem. We can check this answer using multiplication 
and a little bit of addition. We check by taking 507 times the number in front times the 3. Let's go ahead and do that. 3 times 7 is 21. I write the 1, carry the 2. 3 times 0 is 0, but then I add 2, so I have 2. 3 times 5 is 15. And now after I multiply, I have to take my remainder, the 2 we had left over, and add that on. So if I add on 2 more, I get 1 plus 2 is 3, a 2 here, a 5 here, a 1 here. That's 1,523. 1,523 is the number I had inside when I started the problem. So my check works out.